Praise be Jesus and Mary. What a wonderful day this is to celebrate the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. So this is a wonderful day for the entire church throughout the world. This is a universal solemnity, Holy Day of Obligation, for the entire church. It's a special day for our country, for us here at the farm, for our religious institute. Today, the church with Christ glorifies the Immaculate Virgin Mary. And we rejoice, the entrance antiphon for today's Mass. It says, I rejoice heartily in the Lord, in my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. So the church, of course, is putting these words on the lips of Our Lady. You know, it's basically uh, the same intention that she had when she sang her Magnificat, the great things that our Lord did in her and caused her to rejoice. But the church too looks to Our Lady today and we rejoice heartily in the Lord because he has wrapped us in the mantle of Our Lady. And we are children too of this Immaculate Mother along with Christ. And I mentioned our country in a special way, rejoices today too, because Our Lady is the patroness of the United States under this title, the Immaculate Conception. So we can be confident that Our Lady is interceding for, to, for us in a special way today and granting our nation special graces. We rejoice in a particular way also here at the farm because we are dedicated, this property is dedicated and consecrated to Our Lady. Also as an institute of friars and Third Order members who are totally consecrated to Our Lady. We call ourselves the Franciscans of the Immaculate. And then, of course, for every single individual soul who has consecrated themselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And so all of this being union with the church, the mystical body of Christ, we glorify his mother with him, right? We are sons and daughters in the Son, and he calls us to glorify, to honor his mother, as the fourth commandment demands. And so how did the Son honor his mother? He wrapped her with this mantle of justice and clothed her like a bride adorned with jewels, with all of the virtues and all of the gifts and graces from heaven. We read in the first reading the account of Genesis when the first Adam and the first Eve failed. They failed us. They disobeyed. They chose to listen to and believe in a fallen angel instead of God. And so that's why in the gospel, we have the new Eve, the Immaculate Virgin Mary, who, unlike the first Eve, is filled with faith and trust in God. And she believes the angel Gabriel sent from God to announce this message, and who himself brings the message of God, calling her full of grace. And he announces to her her role, her mission in this world, to be the mother of the Redeemer. And she, with full confidence, faith, generosity of soul, cooperates with all of the great graces given to her, and she says, yes. And so for this reason, the Immaculate Conception is called the dawn, okay? The white dawn announcing the rising of the Son of Justice because her Immaculate Conception is the beginning of the victory. It is the fruits of victory already applied to her, the foreseen fruits applied to her in anticipation because God, who dwells in eternity, can do this. And it is fitting that he do this for his own mother, and so he did it. The second reading today from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians 
He says, we, um, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Right? We've been predestined to be sons and daughters, adopted sons and daughters of God, to be holy and without blemish before him. That's our destiny. But that is our end. Right? Those words are fulfilled for each and every one of us when we enter heaven. Once we've been purified from the dross of self-love and disordered attachments to the things of this world. So that is our end. Whereas these words applying to Our Lady, and they do apply to her, as the Church teaches, in one and the same decree from all eternity. She was predestined to be the mother of God. But to be holy and without blemish applies to her in the beginning right from the moment of her conception. She is holy and without blemish. And then throughout her life, there is an exponential increase in grace, in holiness, in gifts. So much so that we cannot and will not ever comprehend it. This is also the teaching of the church. And this is why when treating of Our Lady there is never enough. This is what the theologians say, the Mariologists, we can never say enough. Why? Because we can never fully comprehend the depth of the being of Our Lady. And when I say being, I mean referring to who she is. This was the title that she chose to use when she appeared to Saint Bernadette at Lourdes. Tell me your name. Who are you? Not, I am Mary of Nazareth. I am the mother of Jesus. No, it's, I am the immaculate conception. What in the world does that mean? It's very similar to what we hear God saying in the book of Genesis. I am who am. And so there is a lot of food, endless food, for meditation. And so that's why we can never say enough. We can never ponder enough. We can never love Our Lady enough. Again, as St. Therese of the Child Jesus teaches, we can never love her enough. And one reason, because we will never love her as much as Jesus loves her. And so all of this is cause for rejoicing in the mystical body of Christ as a whole and then each member as an individual. And as Franciscans, we look to the second page. This dogma was solemnly proclaimed in 1854, and now, as the St. Maximilian and the Franciscan school teaches, we are on the second page. Before 1854, it was all the work and discernment and study and promotion to arrive at the proclamation of the solemn, uh, solemnly of the dogma. And now it's the living out it's the embracing of that by totally consecrating ourselves to her immaculate heart. That's what we do. We give ourselves to Our Lady completely, entirely, and allow her to do with us whatever she wants. And when I say whatever, I mean whatever she wants. St. Maximilian, of course, he had the apparition of Our Lady. He knew that red martyrdom was coming. But he didn't know the manner. When he was divine providence came and brought him onto the trains heading toward Auschwitz, he was in total peace and calm. Amid all of the distress, amid all of the horror, the literal hell on earth, this saint was at peace because he knew he was in the hands of his immaculate mother and was, had not departed from her hands, that she was guiding everything as only an immaculate mother can, with all of her maternal tenderness and all of her love, gazing on her son from heaven. One might be tempted to say, you know, how much love can that be, really? I mean, if Our Lady allowed that to happen, 
you know, that's awful, terrible. But we see the fruits from it, right? The great witness, the great light, the confessions he heard in that place of darkness, the hope he gave to those who were being murdered there. So when we consecrate ourselves to Our Lady, it's whatever she wants. We don't know what that may be. And I want to give you an actual example. Today in this Mass, we pray and offer it up. Father Terence is taking the intention for one of our sisters, Sister Anne Marie, a handmaid of the Immaculate, totally consecrated to Our Lady, who was living in the convent in Bellingham, Massachusetts. I just got an email today from one of the other sisters that said she was hit by a truck yesterday. At 2 p.m., she was flown air vacked out to UMass Hospital. Um, their pastor was there to anoint her. She died at 9 o'clock last night. The Vigil of the Immaculate Conception. Somebody might be tempted to say, what's that all about? Or that's a bad sign. I think it's a good sign to be taken by Our Lady on the vigil of her feast, a handmaid of the Immaculate, there's real cause for hope that she is already in heaven. So we keep her in our prayers and offer up the holy sacrifice of the Mass for the repose of her soul. And we also have the grace today of three new, uh, the aspirants today are becoming postulants, and that transition takes place by making the act, solemn act of total consecration, the formula given to us by St. Maximilian Kolbe, and then receiving the miraculous medal, the outward sign of belonging to Our Lady as her property and possession, without reserve and irrevocably. And we also have some renewals of the MIM. So. We have the second page going on here in a practical way today for which we are grateful and we need to continue to persevere in our consecration to Our Lady and have full trust and confidence that she is completely in charge of our lives and of our deaths. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.